All right. You hear me? I hear an echo. Ah. Oh. Now it's better, no? Yes. Okay, so shall I start? Well, Fashion Week got cancelled. The traditional idea of, of Fashion Week and fashion shows got cancelled. And I really love fashion shows and I love the emotion. There is this one thing that you can't do in a fashion show, which is put pose and, and explain where things come from. I thought it was the once in a lifetime occasion to actually give people the background and to actually have this conversation with Brian because he's the starting point of all this. Well, color has always been my my thing. When I first started ceramics, I always wanted to, or pick the, the most challenging color in ceramics, which is red and, and orange. Um, I mean, there's endless combinations of glazes that I could develop, but how can I get as much variation from this one pigment using 15 different uh, formulas of uh, different glazes, if that makes any sense. Um, one of the things that that I try to do in each piece is get a lot of variation in color and texture. I'll make one sculpture with that's all purple, but it'll have like five to 10 different glazes with all the same pigment. So there's still that a lot of variation and in, in layering of glazes, but all the same pigment. Well, it, it totally relates to what we do with patina right. in, in, on something very different. But I, I mean, a brown is never just going to be a brown. A brown is an accumulation of 25 shades of brown. A red is the same. So so it's it's really interesting. I mean, I, it's it's been a really new thing for me to to work color in in that way to 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 feel free to have 25 shades of a, of a same color while exactly, before yeah. while before I would break everybody's head over getting one exact tone of a color for like a whole outfit which would then be totally nerve-wracking because it's really complicated too but so it's 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 a whole new way of of working color so it's it's interesting Usually uh, when I start a sculpture, I'll pick one color and I'll go from there. I try not to choose more than five colors just because I'm relying on a kiln and heat and glaze flow. If I, if I use too many colors, then they, they kind of melt into each other and become uh, muddy. So usually I color block or pick three colors and then kind of accentuate a sculpture with maybe a little bit of red or a little bit of pink or a little bit of blue. The use of color and the texture, the very organic side of it, just really appealed to me. And that's how all this grew. This is actually the first time that I'm doing a collaboration on the ready-to-wear. Um, I got to Berluti two years ago, and I guess the first steps for me were to to understand the, the DNA of the brand, to understand the history of the brand and what I wanted to bring to the brand. And so in a kind of a egocentrical way, there was no room for, for a third inspiration. It needed to be me and Berluti. And, and it took years, two years to, to, to work that out, I guess. But now I think it's very interesting to bring another inspiration to the table because I feel sufficiently confident, I guess, about the silhouette that I've, that I've created over the two years. And so just by, I guess, falling in love with the work of Brian, just kind of all at once clicked in my head that it would make for a very good connection. I uh, work with a photographer in Los Angeles who comes to my studio and the way that we set up my, my work to be photographed is because it's, I'm working on a three-dimensional uh, object with t uh, that's layered with texture and colors. 
it's very kind of difficult to to translate that into like a JPEG or like a, a two-dimensional surface. But when it does actually uh, translate to a computer, it's pretty amazing the details that can be captured and the, the depth that can be captured with a, in two dimension. Even though like my work does have, it does command a lot of attention in real life, that'll be interesting to see how that, that translates. The way I, I translated Brian's work into the collection can be seen in three different manners. There is a very photographical manner where we took close-up pictures of the works and we printed those on, on silk shirts. There is a more artisanal manner where we've been knitting sweatshirts by hand and basically using Brian's work as an, as an inspiration. The third interpretation is, I guess, the most traditionally Berluti one where we see how far we can go color-wise and structure-wise with patina to try and create graphically something that relates to the work, but which is obviously like a more handcraft and traditional way of interpretation. So there is the silky shirts, which is literal, and then there is the patina way, which is way more berluti. When I was researching Berluti, just to see that it was such a prestigious brand, I felt totally comfortable surrendering my work to Chris and the, the designer to translate it into their own uh, product. I felt totally comfortable with that. People have asked me to do collaborations and a lot of times there are like ulterior motives with artists working with other artists and all that, but I, I mean to work with a big company like Berluti is, is definitely an honor. There is this thing that I have with artists is I love people who get their hands dirty. Uh, you could see that also in the paintings that I love or even now what I do at Berluti. It's so much about handcraft. Your work is screaming craft. Thanks. And in that sense, I, I feel also very comfortable. It makes sense to combine Berluti and your work. I mean, the, the way that I approach ceramics is very, very non-traditional. I exploiting an ancient material, a craft-based material, and turning it into uh, like a contemporary art piece and showing it in non-craft galleries. So the fact that my generation and other generations have been so receptive to this because it is kind of like a slap in the face to a lot of traditionalist artists working in ceramics. So the fact that I've, been, I've gotten this far and, and people think it is wild and is very interesting says something about this time period in, in art and culture. But what I, what I love about these, such a positive slap in the face, it's like a positive wake up call. Right. I, I'm, I'm really happy that I didn't make an all black collection and that it's so cheerful and it's so much about freedom. So I find it very right for the moment. I agree. I think the, the art audience needs some cheering, <laughs> some cheering up in these times. There's a lot of a lot of things going on and people are inundated with all sorts of crazy information from uh, social media and sometimes it's best to like tune out a little bit and kind of enjoy the celebration of color and excitement in, in artworks rather than the depressing concept behind some contemporary art. I very much enjoyed this different way of presenting the work to people. And obviously we're also gonna make like a big photo shoot out of this collection because for now I, there's only so much I can show. So we will have like a, a beautiful uh, portfolio of pictures coming out at the end of the year and people will then discover the whole collection and be able to buy it at the same time. So, so it's good, it's interesting. And, and it's nice to be able to explain stuff to people, but I will miss emotion. So as soon as we can go back to fashion shows and storytelling, I will definitely do that. <laughs>